your fantasy gymnastics update for the regional championships. Here at Gymcastic, we have a brand new fantasy game. Salaries have been updated just for regionals. It's a free-to-play, one-weekend-only game. The game starts on Thursday. We have a color-coded player salary sheet in the Gymcastic forum so you can plan and select your team. And you can do all the spreadsheet stuff. Spencer, what else? So the play-ins don't count. That's why the game starts on Thursday. And if an athlete performs uh, on an apparatus more than once during regionals, because it's a multi-round competition, we're taking the highest score. That's our gift to you. You have you have do-overs. Um, and since all of the salaries have been updated based on season performance, um, it's kind of hard to talk steals the way we did during the season, but we do have some strategies for you and some very special steals that I would recommend you take advantage of. Wink, wink. So uh, let's let's go. Welcome to Jim Kastik, the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. We've been around for 11 years, and I'm here with Spencer from the Balance Beam Situation, where you can find all the information you need to plan and watch fantasy, uh, real gymnastics, and play in your mind the fantasy and et cetera. So, um, regional championship. We are recording this on April Fool's. April 1st, but there are no April Fool's jokes in this because Spencer won't let me. So let's talk about strategy. I would say for this regionals game, look for the athletes who've been pacing themselves because this is what you've been pacing yourself for. You're not burnt out so that you can hit when you might get eliminated if you don't hit. Um, and I would, would go for athletes who have high potential, even if they've been inconsistent, because this isn't the long game anymore. This is the short game. And, you know, you need the high scores. So get to the people who can get them. Like some roster bargains. Okay, so Vault. Let's start with Vault. Gabby Wilson, Michigan. So she's only $2,000. Gymcastic bucks now. So she's been mid nine eights most of the season. Um, she does have a nine nine five this year. More importantly, she can get you a ten. In fact, you know the last time she scored a ten on vault, it was the twenty twenty two regional championship. So it can happen. Let's also talk Jade Carey because the thing with Jade is that she hasn't been doing a lot of vault and floor, and we're basing these gymnastic bucks prices on the rankings and. She's her ranking is not where one might expect Jade Carey to be ranked on vault, and she doesn't even have a ranking on floor. Um, but you know, it's Jade, she's literally one of the best vaulters there's ever been. Uh, so you know, if she turns it on now, look out. And now would be the time, it's might be the last yeah, chance. So expect yeah. her to go all out. So Ava Segfeld at Oklahoma, only a thousand gymnastic bucks. Um, only recently entered the lineup for vault on Oklahoma, but it's the vault lineup for Oklahoma. So if you're in it, you're getting like she did nine, 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 eight, five, nine, nine, the Oklahoma lineup. If you get nine, eights, it's basically you're it's in the trash can. You just throw that away. Cause they're so good on vault. So like she's a salary bargain that you can get a really good score with. Okay. In the risky, but interesting department, I'm putting Emily Morgan at Utah because, okay. She has only vaulted twice this season, and she went to back across the pond to be like, also, I can make the Olympic team. But in her vaults, one of them was a 9-9. Nine -nine. And now's the time where you want to bring out your best ones. You want to bring out your difficulty. You want to go for it at regionals. And I think if you're Utah and you're going for it, you want to give Morgan a shot. So it's very risky. Don't don't blame me if she doesn't vault because she's only vaulted twice. But just think about it. I don't know. KJ Johnson of LSU, only 3,000 gymnastic bucks. And here's the thing. She's only cracked 9-9 nine, nine twice this season, even though she's done perfect 10, 10, 9 9 5 value vaults. But she just showed a video of practice where she's doing a double twisting Yurchenko, which is worth mm. a 10. So... This is your big chance to get a guaranteed 9-9, or if she starts from a 10, a guaranteed 9-9-5, maybe she'll finally get the perfect score she should have gotten with the Yurchenko full. So, KJ Johnson. On bars, we need to talk about Andy Lee from Cal. Amazing on any event she does. Um, 
nearly perfect a couple of weeks ago with a 9975. So her scores this season have been a little up and down for Cal, which means like sometimes you might get a score in the 98s and Cal's like we don't do that on bars. Um but I think that you can add her to your roster without breaking the bank at 2000 gymcastic bucks and she has potential to do kind of a flawless bars routine. Caitlin Rosen for UCLA, only 2000 gymcastic bucks. Like listen, Caitlin Rosen was born like came out of the womb and did a salute and was ready to compete like there's never been someone so in love with competition who performs so consistently um put her in your roster if for nothing else if for not her great scores her nine nines after like her pack 12 uh routine for her post routine celebrations they're guaranteed to up her score even if the judges don't mean to they are a bonus <laughs> Okay, Faith Torres, Oklahoma. Let's be honest, like, you want an Oklahoma gymnast in your bars lineup because, you know, if they get a 49.9 on bars, no one's going to be surprised. Uh, she's the cheapest regular member of the Oklahoma bars lineup and, you know, often breaks 9.9 also. So, you know, that's your way to get an Oklahoma bars worker in your lineup. Anna Bramlett from BYU, only 2,000 gymnastic bucks. And Anna is, she's one of the individual qualifiers moving forward this postseason from uh, BYU who are competing in the postseason. They're in the play-in meet. And when going head-to-head with Oklahoma and Denver at the Big 12 Championships, Anna scored a 9.95 on bars. So she's kind of good. Okay, so another individual qualifier, Zoe Middleton. Ball State, so she was one of the ones who got a 10 on bars at that crazy Tennessee meet. NQS is not up to that level, but we know how much precedent can maybe allegedly possibly influence scores later on if judges already know that someone else has gotten away with giving someone a 10. So, you know, keep that one in mind. 1,000 gymnastic bucks. Let's go to Beam, the most important event. All right, back to Ava Segfeld. From Oklahoma, only a thousand gymnastic bucks on beam only three times. In her very first beam, she got a 10. Her very first beam, she got a 10, you guys, at Big 12 Conference Championships. She scored a 995. My case is made. Look out for Keelan McCright at Clemson. So Clemson is one of the teams in the plans, but Keelan is qualified as an individual no matter what, even if Clemson doesn't advance as a team with an NQS of 9885. Four times a 9-9 or better, got a 9-9-2-5 the week before conference championships. So if you're looking for some of those Clemson steals, they aren't don't necessarily they haven't had time to build up the reputation yet, but they're getting the scores. Uh Keelan McCright is definitely should be top of the list. Noelle Adams from Iowa State. Iowa State, another um team who is in the play and meet. They're competing against Clemson. Um Noel is an individual qualifier on vault beam and floor and on beam her NQS is tied with McCrite uh, with a 9885 and she also has a 9925 so these two are going to be interesting in fantasy head to head. Uh, Catherine Waymiller at San Jose State is another one. These San Jose State San Jose State beamers, you guys, they're legit. And Way Miller is another one, NQS of 987. Um, you know, kind of all over the place with the scores this season, but has a 9925 recently and um, is another one who was not in the regular season game. So I think it's also kind of fun just to look up getting athletes you didn't have an option to get before, but have had a great season and qualified to nationals and you can put them in your, or qualified to regionals and you can put them in your lineup. The next steal, also from San Jose State, because hidden gems on their roster for Beam, uh, Lauren McPherson, her NQS is 9905, which is the same as Ellie Lazardi, Sophia Groth, Shania Adams, Mia Takakawa, and a few others. So she's legit. On floor, I want to give a moment for Jamison Sears of Alabama, 1,000 gymnastic bucks. So Jamison has not been in the floor and lineup that often, but has the last two meets with a 9.925 and a 9.9. So the people who are just looking at like the NQS rankings are going to miss her 
because she hasn't competed that much. But if you're paying close attention to recency, she's been in the lineup and she's been scoring very well. Yeah, and she's hilarious and dances the whole time and wears her own crown the full time. So she's fun. So invest in her. Uh, Jay Mack from Illinois State. You guys, she's one of my favorites. Only 2,000 gymnastic bucks. Jay is an individual qualifier on floor and vault and has a very usable 9-9 NQS on floor. She's gone 9-9 or above seven times this season, including a conference championship, um, and has a high score of 995 on floor so uh, and she's so fun to watch she's so bouncy (laughs) okay so i just want to let everyone know that this is not a mistake there's a reason for this because jade carrie's floor is 1000 jim castic bucks and that wasn't like a a, a, an error or and it's not like we haven't heard of jade carey just sometimes the fantasy gym gods bestow a gift on you and jade hasn't done enough road floor routines to have a ranking on floor so she's uh, a thousand gymnastic bucks but also you know is gonna get a 10 so you're welcome <laughs> louisa blanco at alabama only two thousand gymnastic bucks so before she heads off to the paris olympics louisa should be making a stop in your fantasy lineup she finished the season with a 991 nqs and six routines of 99 or above along with a perfect 10 also Note that Shay Campbell is back in the UCLA floor lineup. So she's been in and out, but, you know, when she's in, it's Shay Campbell. So 2,000 gymnastic bucks. She's back when it matters. So excited to see her. Okay, the league. So reminders, lock your lineup Thursday morning. So after the play-in meets, lock your lineup. before. Be sure to click the finish button. Don't forget to click the finish button button that's how you save your roster once you've made the changes and the winner of the regional fantasy league will win a mini commission the winner of the main of the big league the regular season won a whole commission but we're going to give you a mini commission um so if you have enjoyed this season of the fantasy uh gymnastics podcast which we'll be doing for championships as well that'll be our last one the grand finale um we have a club club gym nerd and you can join us you get a whole extra podcast every week and it goes all the time we don't take time off it's constant we're not four-year fans we're here all the time we're here for college we're here for elite so and we're having a live show um in fort worth on april 19th with a special special secret guest And um, our VIP tickets have already sold out. There's only one ticket left for premium seats. It's super, super fun. You guys, if you love college gymnastics, you'll love our live shows. So um, tickets are on sale now at gymcastic.com. We also have virtual tickets. If you can't be there in person, don't worry. You can watch at home. Um, And you can watch for two weeks, even if you can't make it on that night for two weeks and you can ask questions, you get to participate as a virtual watcher as well. Also visit the balancebeamsituation.com for live blogs, all the information you need on how to watch, how to get the scores, plus most importantly, the gifts. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and we will see you for our next fantasy show before NCAA championships. Thanks for watching. (laughs) 